Welcome to this presentation about GProfNG, the next generation GNU profiling tool. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to uh, present at this uh, workshop. Uh, thank you for, for doing that. I will uh, try to make this presentation informative and entertaining. My name is Ruth van der Pas, and this is joint work with Vladimir Mazentsev and Kurt Gobel. I will be uh, the one presenting today. I'll start with a brief history, then an overview of GProf and G. I'd like to, um, to show a demo how you can actually make your profile. This is really a tool that you need to see in action. Then I'll uh, give you a sneak preview of the GUI. I'll talk about some other components as well. And um, then future directions, what we're currently thinking of, of uh, where we want to take this tool, and Q&A. It all started with the Oracle Developer Studio Performance Analyzer. That was a profiling tool developed for over 20 years and built up a, quite an impressive user base. And the good thing is they came with uh, real-world applications. Very often those were pretty ugly applications, so it sort of battle-hardened the tool along the way. But the focus was on the Spark processor, the studio compilers, and the Solaris operating system. And uh, while there was an x86 Linux version, it, I would say it was not as well developed as the Spark Solaris side. And what we did, we took that source base, um, that, that source code as, as a basis for our work on GProf and G. But it's a lot more than just renaming, um, and I want to give you a feel for the kind of things that we uh, have been doing while working on uh, getting this ready to launch. First of all, we created a standalone version on Linux. You no longer need a studio environment. You can just use this as a standalone profiling tool. We adapted the source code to the GNU coding standards. That's actually quite some work. We adapted the build process to be compliant with uh, bin utils, um, because that's what we are part of today. We added a port to ARM. That's very exciting, um, because um, that, that's, uh, that's an interesting processor, and we, uh, we can do profiling on ARM now. We fixed uh, several bugs that crossed our path, and we completely redesigned the user interface, plus some other things. So to the outside world, it started August 11, 2021, when we submitted our uh, request for preview to, um, to the bin utils community. These are uh, mails are all archived. You can look it up if you want, and Vladimir sent it out and uh, made the code available as a patch and, um, and asked for help with the review. And then March 9, 2022, we, uh, we got the long-awaited message that we were going to be part of the main line. So that was a, a really good moment. So from, from now on, we are part of uh, Bin Neutils. And uh, we would like to thank the reviewers. Also within Oracle, we have several people that really helped us uh, with that process that was new to us to become part of, um, of a GNU project called Bin Neutils. So many thanks, and we're now part of the distribution. So as of uh, bin neutrals 2.39, we are, we are included. So if you'd like to have GProf and G, make sure that you have 2.39. Meanwhile, 2.4 has been released. So if you go to the uh, um, bin neutrals website and you download our stuff, you will automatically get uh, GProf and G. It's part of it. When you go to the uh, sourceware.org uh, bin neutrals page, uh, you'll see GProf and G uh, listed there. If you click on that, it's actually a hyperlink and it will take you to um, documentation. We're working on a wiki, uh, trying to get that as complete as possible. It's a lot of work, but it's uh, growing steadily. So if you'd like to get started with GProf and G and you want to get some more information, then this could be a good place to start. There's also documentation included in the bin util, so the choice is yours, but definitely uh, don't forget about the wiki. This is how you get your copy. Um, the, the general the bin utils uh, page, how to get your copy of bin utils, and again, we are included. We're also working on getting, um, getting RPMs out in addition to this. That's work in progress, um, but we're very keen on uh, making it as easy as possible to install GProf and G on your system. There's also a blog that came out a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that has more information on GProf and G. I put this slide in for, uh, for references. You can just find it on the uh, Oracle blogging website and it uh, gives some more information. So what's GProf and G? It's, it collects and displays application performance data. It's a tool to help you make a profile of your application. And we support programs written in C, C++, Java, and Scala. 
We have full support for the GCC compilers. We have, on the Fortran side, we have full support for F77 and F95. We did some limited testing for uh, later releases of the Fortran specifications. The first results look encouraging, uh, but that's by far from, a, from an exhaustive test. So um, your feedback is actually welcomed. If you're interested in that, let us know. And um, if you have a problem, please um, work with us on a test case so we can do the diagnosis. On the hardware side, we support various processors from Intel, AMD and ARM. And one of the really good thing about our tool is, I think, is that you don't need to recompile the code. It works with existing binaries let's say the production binary, the one you're running on a day-to-day -day basis and you want to make a profile of it, you don't have to do anything special. I will show that in the demo. Um, you can just profile whatever you're running and I think that's a really uh, really good thing because you're, you're profiling exactly what you're running. If you, if you recompile a code, you're inherently looking at something different. Uh, you don't need to do that in our case. Uh, we have full support for multi-threading. POSIX threads, OpenMP and Java threads are all supported. So how does dprof and G work? It's a two-step approach. First, uh, in first step, you collect the performance data uh, on the target executable. Um, you run your job, and as your job is running, dprof and G collects the performance data. And in the next phase, you display the data. Actually, and, and uh, before I forget to say that, you can actually monitor your program as you do the collection. You don't have to wait for it to finish. You can monitor it while it's running. But in general, people wait for the job to finish and then they start looking at the performance data. You get the information at the function source and disassembly level, but we have, we have other views as well. And what I find that even a single run can already provide me a lot of insight. And as is the case with profiling, usually you start digging, uh, digging deeper into a certain part of the, uh, of the execution. We support scripting, so you can completely uh, automate uh, the creation of the profiles the end of the job, they'll, uh, they'll be in your file and on your screen. You can uh, use filters to zoom in on a certain aspect of the performance, uh, performance profile. So that's really helpful to uh, really get to the bottom of something. And we have a feature called comparison of profiles. And when you think about it, profiling is about comparisons. And we support that. And I'll have an example of that later on. The name GProf and G, a next generation, sort of begs for a comparison with a good old GProf. This is by far uh, an exhaustive uh, comparison, just give you a feel. GProf uses tracing and instrumentation. We don't do that. Uh, we use sampling, which is essentially not touching your code. Uh, GProf, you often, you need to recompile with a specific option. Uh, we don't ask that uh, for you to do. Uh, GProf has fallen behind in terms of supporting modern features. We try to be up to date. We support chat libraries and multi-threading, for example. There's not a lot of customization you can do with GProf. We provide extensive customization. GProf does not have any filters, as far as I know. We have various filters, so you can, for example, zoom in on certain threads. You can select certain call stacks. Um, you can zoom in on, on a certain area of time. So you can, you can see like, okay, I want to know what happened 10 seconds after my program started running. GProf certainly cannot uh, compare profiles. We do that. Um, and there no, there's no support for event counters. We do have hardware event counter support. It's limited. We don't support the latest processors. We know that we should do that. And it's uh, one of the things we hope to be working on. But right now, um, no, right now we're a little bit behind on that. So here's how, uh, how GProf and G works. Um, it, it's called statistical call stack sampling. And um, here's what happens. As the program executes, we stop it. We interrupt it. We record whatever we want to know, like the program counter, where the program was, but a lot of other information. And then we let go again and we'll run it for, uh, for 10 milliseconds by default, but that the sampling rate is one, thing you, one of the things you can control. By default, 10 milliseconds later, we stop it again and again, and that will help build up the information. At the end of the run, that allows us to show you a profile of the program. And here's I'm showing some imaginary, um, imaginary profile. Note that first line, and you'll see that in the, the demos as well, is called total. That's a pseudo function generated by GProf and G. That has the total of whatever metrics you're looking at, like the CPU time, 
or cache misses or whatever. And that's normalized to 100%. And then for the other functions, we give the time and the percentage breakdown. So you can quickly zoom in on the most time-consuming parts of your program. Note this is uh, called statistical. It's sampling. So if you run exactly the, the same problem again, the numbers are most likely slightly different. Uh, because of the whole nature of the process, but what we find is those those differences are typically very small. The one downside is if a function is very tiny, you may miss it with the sampling, and that's why we provide a different uh, different sampling rates so you can customize that to the uh, the needs of your application. A little bit about the uh, the command structure. I'm not very good at it, but here's what we have. Every command starts with gprof and g, so it automatically makes it unique. Then you give some functionality. Depending on the functionality, there's a qualifier and uh, possibly some options. So for example, to collect performance information, you use the collect functionality. You tell it you want to uh, profile your app. And um, with the dash capital O, you give the experiment directory that has all the data a, a meaningful name. A display text takes that directory as input and um, that's the basis for your analysis and you can do some archiving on an experiment directory as well. So that's uh, by and large the kind of command structure for gprof and g. We currently have five tools available. There's a sixth one coming and I'll say some more about that towards the end. There's collect app to collect the performance data. There's display text to display uh, that performance data in ASCII format. We have a way to generate a, an HTML structure so you can use your regular browser to navigate through the data. Unfortunately, that's not yet available for ARM. It's high on the list, um, but it works for Intel and AMD. We're working on a GUI. Um, and, uh, we, we're trying to get that into your hands as soon as possible, and I have some screenshots of what that will look like. We have the archiving command, and there's a, there's a command to look at the source code uh, interleaved with instructions. Before I go into the examples, there's something I need to explain. It's the difference between inclusive and exclusive metrics. And when I say metric, that's something that we measure. Let's say CPU time to make it easy. But it could also be cache misses, for example, or instructions executed. The inclusive metric includes all the colleagues underneath the caller. So uh, what it means, you're at a certain part of the call tree and you count everything that happens underneath, including calling other functions. So that's like uh, the, the profile for a subtree of your, of your uh, program. And um, that's a useful metric, but you also probably want to look at the exclusive metric where we only show you the time spent outside of calling other functions. So that's like the pure time that you spend um, in, in that function outside of calling other functions. Both met metrics are useful. Uh, inclusive will point you to the most expensive execution branch in your, in your profile. Exclusive helps you then to zoom in on within that branch who's spending most of the time. So both metrics have uh, value. Uh, we show them both. And here's a simple example. Uh, let's say this is my call tree seen from this orange uh, function. That's called a function A. It's calling three other functions and one of them calls another function and the times are shown in those blocks. That would give you the, the following values for the inclusive time. A is calling everybody else, so the inclusive time is the accumulation of all the time spent there, 75 seconds. Its exclusive time is 10. B is what we call a leaf routine. It's not calling anybody else, so the inclusive and exclusive time are the same, 20 seconds in this case. The, the light blue one, let's call it C, um, takes 5 seconds by itself, but it's calling something that takes 25 seconds, so its time is 30 seconds, and its, uh, its inclusive time is 30 seconds, its exclusive time is 5, and so forth. So that's the difference between those two metrics. Now, I've mentioned that already. Uh, I don't want to repeat myself too often, but I just want to call out some really cool um, things that come with gprof and g. The scripting, I mentioned that already. You can completely do your Q&A testing. You can uh, generate your, your profiles in an automatic way. And I, I do that all the time. I put that in, in scripts. Comparison of profiles, uh, you can compare as sort of as many experiments as you like, although in, in practice you probably want to use just a handful at best. Um, it's very useful. It, it supports pro comparison at different levels, source, function, disassembly level. So you can really uh, you know, dig deeper and deeper. It's supported in text mode and the GUI uh, 
does support that too. In the GUI, you will also have a really nice feature called the timeline that shows you a color-coded view of the runtime behavior. And I'll, I have a screenshot of that that shows you uh, what's going on in your application as it executes. It's a great way to get insight into the dynamics of your program. I think it's high time for a demo. So let me, uh, let me start the demo and um, I'll continue with some more examples after that. In this GProf and G demo, I'd like to show you how to make a basic profile. I want to show you how easy it is to get a basic profile of your own application. Uh, I'm largely going to rely on the defaults. Uh, just keep in mind, you can customize this environment to a great extent and change whatever you see and don't like. But here I want to show you how you just get started. You have your application. What do you need to do in order to get a basic profile on your screen? And to that extent, I prepared a demo program. It's uh, multiplying a matrix vector algorithm. It's been written in C and parallelized with POSIX threads. So what we can do, we can uh, run it. And I just want to multiply an 8,000 by 4,000 matrix. And of course, this um, is a, a parallel program. So I want to use two threads. So this is the normal way that I would run my, uh, my program. It will run for a few seconds as an internal uh, check to see whether the results uh, are okay. It looks like the error check passed, so we're done. The question is, where does this program spend its time? How can I use GProf and G to find out? Well, what you need to do, you run your program as usual, and I can't stress that enough. You don't need to do anything special, no environment variables to set, no libraries to link. You run it as usual, but you're going to run it under control of GProf and G and you need to tell it what you want to do. And in this case, I want to collect performance information on my application. So that's what I do. And the first thing we see is a new line called creating experiment directory test.bond.er in the process ID. That's generated by GProf and G. And what it confirms to me that it is actually generating the performance data, it will go into a directory with the name test.bond.er and it gives us the process ID of the job that we are running. Now, the test of one ER is a default name. Um, it, the system will give it to you, the GProf and G system will give it to you. If you would run this again, uh, it will create a test.2.er and so forth, because by default, we do not overwrite existing experiments. And you can rely on this default name, but there's, uh, there are two options to actually give the experiment a more meaningful name, the dash lowercase o to give it, um, give it a name and not write it, overwrite existing experiments, or the dash capital O that will overwrite um, experiments with the same name. That's actually what I use all the time. But again, here we're going to rely on the defaults. So now we have uh, our performance information in this directory called test.1.er. And it's just a regular Linux directory. It has a whole uh, boatload of stuff that's uh, used by the other parts of GProf and G to show you the information. So how do I how do I get that information? Well, for that, we have the display command, GProf and G, display. And I want to get the, uh, the text-based overview on my screen. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell it which directory or directories, you can have more than one, to use it um, to read and analyze. By default, if you use it like this, it'll get you into interactive or interpreter mode. You can issue commands, there's a help. I actually, I, I never use it that way. I, um, I typically add the commands at the command line or if they get more complicated, I put them in, into a script. And um, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to show you the command line uh, interface. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to issue the same command, but here I'm going to tell GProf and G what I want to see. And I want to see a function overview. And there we are. So now I have that basic profile on my screen. It's telling me where the time is spent. The first line, and let me sort of highlight that, it says a function sorted by metric. Um, so the data is sorted by the exclusive total CPU time. It's one of those things you can completely customize. You can define the sort metric that you'd like to use. Here I rely on the default. So what we see, we see five columns. The first two columns are for the exclusive total CPU time. The next two columns are for the inclusive total CPU time and then the name of the function. We also see a line called total. 
Total is a pseudo function generated by G prof and G. It, it accumulates the total value of the matrix, in this case, um, exclusive and inclusive total CPU time into that pseudo function. And that's used to normalize the data. So what we see, this program took about 9.5 seconds to, uh, to execute uh, in terms of CPU time, and that's 100%. The other thing that we see is that uh, the, the most time-consuming function is, our, is a function called mxv underscore core. It takes about 94%. Uh, Note that the exclusive and inclusive times are the same. That means it's a leave function. It's not calling anything else. So the, what we immediately learn, if we ever want to do some optimization on this program, we need to focus on mxv core. The next line, um, although from an absolute point of view it's not interesting, it just takes 5% uh, of the total time, there's a function called init data, and what we see, there's a difference between the exclusive and inclusive total CPU time. What that means is that init data is calling other functions. And including all those other functions, uh, it takes 0 0.520 seconds. Uh, by itself, it takes about 0 0.3 seconds. So um, whatever it's calling, that's not insignificant. That's almost half of the, uh, the total time spent in that function. So that's how you can use that information, the exclusive and inclusive total CPU time, to get a good feel of where your program is, um, is spending its time. And again, this is all that you need to do for your application in order to get a profile. Another thing that I um, that I want to show um, is, of course, the next thing that you want to know is, well, how about that function mxv core then? And I'm going to use the source command uh, here and be, be aware that you can combine those, those commands in a single line. They, they tend to get long and that's when you want to put them in a script. But the only reason um, I use them one by one here is because of um, layout reasons. So I want to see the, the source of that function called MXV core. And there it is. Um, let me scroll back a bit. It's, this was the command that I used. Display text. I used the source uh, command or option to give me the source for that function. It gives me some, um, some statistics of where that, uh, where that code is, etc. Um, but now we see that um, the source code has been annotated with where this time is spent, the exclusive and inclusive total CPU time as a number and a percentage. And we mark the most expensive lines with this double hash here. So what we see, we see the, the, the two lines that clearly take most of the time. No surprise, given there's not much else happening here. But in that way, you can quickly find out at the source level where your program is spending its time. In case that's not sufficient, you can actually go further and you can go to the disassembly, the instructions. So instead of using the source command, I said this ASM, disassemble, and there we go. And now I have the same information, but now it's um, annotated at the instruction level. So you can find out where the most expensive instruction is. The number between the square brackets here, that's your source line number. So we map back to the source line number. We also show you the source here, so it's a little easier to, uh, to find out where those instructions belong to. In general, uh, reading assembly is not always that easy, and there's out-of-order execution and those kind of things. But definitely, um, this is a very easy way to show you at the instruction level where most of the time is spent. And that's literally all that it takes to get this kind of insight down to the instruction level. Well, I hope you found this uh, demo uh, useful and uh, gives you some sort of feel of what it, uh, what it means to be using GProf and G. Here's something else that I want to show you that's not part of the demo. Uh, the comparison of profiles. I'm using here, first of all, I'm using the dash capital O option to give the experiment uh, directory a more meaningful name. And I want to measure cache misses uh, through the dash H option. I enable hardware event counter profiling. And I want to look at last level misses. So how many cache misses did I have at the last level in my cache hierarchy? And I want to compare that for a, a job running on one thread and one on two threads. So I want to see what's the difference if I go multi-threaded. 
So I generate two experiment directories with the, with the commands as shown here. And then I am going to do the comparison. And uh, I put those commands into a script because I really don't want to type that all in. And in that script, I first of all, I limit the output to five lines. I only want to see the first five lines. Then I define the metrics. What do I want to see? Well, I only want to see the name of the function and the exclusive last level misses. If you don't do that, you'll get the default metrics with quite some information. Here, I just want to focus on the last level misses, the exclusive cache misses. I enable the comparison, that's the red line, and I want to see the function overview. And with that, I get this kind of overview. I get the function name. Again, the total gives you the total number of cache misses in this case, and then the breakdown over the, over the various functions. And you can do a side-by-side -side comparison. But on pur purpose, I picked this example because these numbers can be huge and it's not always easy to, uh, to quickly see what's going on. That's why we have a different flavor of the comparison. Note that I didn't rerun um, my, my experiments. I still have the same experiments. But now instead of um, enabling comparison by compare on, I say I want to see the ratio of the numbers. And with that, I can quickly see whether the, the number of misses go down or go up. So um, we, we do that by dividing the reference, which is the first column, uh, the, the current one by the, by the reference. So you can see, again, whether you have more or less cache misses or whatever you're measuring. It's a very good way to quickly see what's going on. I already mentioned the HTML tool. It generates an HTML structure out of an experiment or multiple experiments. I just want to show you some screenshots. This, um, this uh, gives you the, uh, the overview, just some global statistics. Uh, you can get the function view, and um, this is HTML, so a lot of hyperlinks that takes you to, for example, the source, the disassembly, some of the call tree fe features that we have, and I didn't mention uh, in this talk, but uh, just click on it and you'll get the overview. For example, you click on source, you'll get the source view. There's a little bit of color coding going on. And you can go down to the instruction level and it allows you for very um, easy navigation through the through the data. The last thing that I want to show is the, um, the GUI. That's a sneak preview. We got it running in our labs and we're trying to uh, get it released as soon as possible. Here's this thing called the timeline. It has many views, but I want to show you the timeline. The time is flowing from left to right. The top line is the operating system state. And um, uh, green means good news. The operating system is happy running my code. If you don't, if you see another color, it's probably not so good news. Um, and then we have uh, four more horizontal uh, lines. Those are for the four different threads that I was using for this application. And each function gets a different color. So that's why you see all those different colors. And we plot them as a function of time. So you can perfectly well see the dynamic behavior of your program. And um, so what we have here, the operating system state, you have the different threads, uh, all those call stacks. You click on, on, the, on, a, on a time, pointing time, and then it will tell you uh, in which thread you were, and it will give you some statistics about that thread. So in that way, you can get the execution details very easily. We have more views. We have a flame graph with the timeline I've just uh, shown you. You can zoom in, you can change the colors. I do that all the time. And, and the comparison works for uh, in the GUI as well. So you can literally put side by side uh, different runs. In this case, a run on four threads and eight threads. And I can, uh, I can look at uh, the, the differences. Now, some of the things that we are working on or thinking about doing our, our top priority is to, is to help people get started. Um, we want to grow the user base. Uh, we can help you uh, getting started. And uh, if you need some help analyzing performance, if we have time, we'll, we'll gladly help you with that. Regarding the, the development, um, the wiki and documentation um, is important to expand. We'd like to collaborate with people that would like to contribute to GProf and G. It's open source after all. Uh, we are working on making RPMs available for the Red Hat universe. Um, some people have already done some work on it, so we, we're making progress there. We want to support ARM for the display HTML functionality. We want to make it easier to uh, port to a different platform. 
and certainly get the GUI out as soon as possible. Other topics, uh, hardware event counters for more recent processors, more metrics, remote analysis through a client server setup that will be nice attached to a running process, expand display HTML, it has a lot of potential, a porting guide, uh, what does it take to port the GPROF and G to other platforms, investigate, like maybe we can use this tool to do auto FDO in GCC, for example, lots of things on, uh, on our list. So that concludes the presentation. I hope you found it useful. I hope it has given you some sort of an idea of what GPROF and G is about. And I think it's high time for Q&A. So uh, please, um, let's please start the, uh, the Q&A session. Thank you. A big round of applause for you. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I don't think you can hear that, but everyone was clapping. Uh, we have about okay. like 15 people in the room. Um, so is there any okay. question from the audience here? I, I got a question in the in the chat in the Q and A. Yeah, I'll, I'll Benson, Benson. The chat, but I will give the microphone to someone else here in the room. Okay. Hey, thank you very much for the demo. It was really interesting. I I was wondering if there are ways that you can specify certain functions to be, for example, runtime functions. If you were running on a specific runtime, uh, can you separate what is user code from what is a runtime code? You mean like what? What is from a library, like a shared library? For example, in yeah. in OpenMP, when you create an OpenMP region, you usually get something called right. KMP underscore underscore KMP underscore parallel, and uh, other profiling tools like Intel has been using that information to understand uh, to either lay over more information about the parallel the parallelism of the application or to uh, provide more information about the overhead of the runtime versus the the application itself. Oh, yeah. Okay. I get it. Thanks. It's good that you mentioned OpenMP. I'm quite familiar with that. And um, that's actually one thing we had to temporarily give up on um, uh, when we switched from the studio compilers to GCC, because the studio compilers had the same. They were instrumented to recognize and provide information up to up to the analyzer that could read it. Um, we don't have that in GCC. It is one of the things on our list to do the mapping between the higher level language, like in this case, the controls of OpenMP, back to the user. Currently, you only get a raw uh, call stacks, which um, is useful, but it's not as elegant and, and you know, it doesn't allow you, like you said, to do the grouping as, um, uh, as you can do, um, yeah, as we could do in the studio compiler. So yeah, with, with some bleeding heart, I have to admit that. <laughs> Okay, thank you much. Um, while I bring up the other presentation, you may want to ask uh, answer the question if it can collect power information, which will came yeah. from the chat. No, unfortunately, we don't. Um, it is. I, I have been thinking about that. Uh, we actually uh, we have another. Um, you know, since this is a, a performance sort of tuning uh, organization um, or group, sorry, I, I wanted to mention that one thing we're struggling with is um, variable frequency process of frequency. Um, we currently have no way of tracking it. I've submitted a bug report against ourselves on it. Uh, we, 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 we can. So, so any of those um, kind of features like a power usage, um, dynamic frequency adjustments, I'm afraid we, we, we don't handle that. But it's, it's good to note. We, we do have our wish list, and um, I'm quite sure other people will ask for power, users, uh, power usage as well. Thank you.